Welcome back to Pretend. My name is James and this is the second video in our series on music photography. In this video, we're going to be looking at the best settings to use once you actually get to a show. Live music is most photographers' absolute nightmare. You're shooting something that's moving very fast in very low light. So your main job as a live music photographer is to get as much light as possible into the camera as quickly as possible. To do this, you need to understand the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO of your camera. And once you do that, you'll basically know how to do it. This is a rundown of some photography basics, but from the view of a music photographer for you. So the first is your shutter speed. Your shutter speed is how quickly you expose the sensor. It's the classic chick chick sound. And that is basically how much time you give light to reach the sensor. Because you're moving, shooting something very quickly, you want something quite short. So you freeze that motion in time. And that means that you're not getting as much light in as you otherwise would. The camera you use doesn't really affect this because any camera can pretty much open and close its shutter really quickly. Where it might be affected is if you're using a thing called burst mode, which is where you get that classic, like lots of things moving in a one go, which is what I'm showing you here. But sadly, I didn't have a camera that was good enough to do this at the time. So this isn't a music thing. It's just a little little uppy downy boy. The second thing to understand is aperture. This is how wide the hole in the lens is that exposes the sensor. So you can compensate for a fast shutter speed with a wide aperture. I normally start my gig shooting around one f1.8 if I have that or f2.8 or however wide my lens goes. How wide your aperture can go is entirely dependent on your lens and has nothing to do with your camera body and is probably the single most important thing in live music photography. The final thing to consider is ISO. ISO is basically digitally adding light to your photo. It's a lot more complicated than that, but I don't understand the science of it. But the problem with it is if you add too much, then you start to get a grainy effect, which is great if you choose it, but if you don't want it there, then it looks rubbish. Now I've given you a very basic introduction to photography there. It's entirely from my perspective and those things don't always apply to all types of photography, but it's a start. Now we've got that, you want to set your camera to manual mode. It's scary, I know, but I find that when you leave things on automatic, the camera will make adjustments and two photos that are very similar will come out looking drastically different because you, of some setting the camera has changed without you realizing it. And that can be really annoying. Whereas when it's on manual, you have control of what's going on, uh, even if the lighting around you is going mental. When you set a faster shutter speed, you make a photo darker but you can compensate for that by setting a wider aperture. The problem with a wider aperture is that you have a shallower depth of field, so fewer things are in focus. So you can see my face is in focus here, but the background's all nice and blurry. So that's because I've got a wide aperture right now. Um, this can play havoc with cheaper cameras also focus. So if you look at this photo here that I did of Murray from Easy Life, it's almost amazing, but my camera for some reason decided that his finger was more important than his face. So it ruins the photo and it means that it's, you know, great as a background, but can't actually be used. And that's really frustrating. Despite this, I do tend to, tend to shoot with a aperture of wide open, as wide as possible, because the benefits of that depth of field are amazing. And you're shooting in such dark locations so often that you still, even if you've got a wide open aperture, you still need to add some ISO. So taking light away unnecessarily will actually degrade the quality of your image. So as I said originally, ISO can add noise to your photos. And that can be great if it's a choice that you want. But if you look at this photo of Joshua Zero that I took at our show at the Cavendish Arms in February, of 2020 before everything happened. Um, it's got loads of noise and it's good. It's a good photo, but it's limited in that I can't take that noise away because that's how it was shot. I tend to start shows with my settings at one over 250th of a second for the shutter speed, f 1.8 or as wide as my lens will go, and ISO at 1 600. This would be really high ISO for any normal photography, but I find that it works well in live music settings. You've really just got to go in and play around and see what works best. But I find these are a good starting point from which to make adjustments because you know you're gonna get sharp images and everything else can go from there. If you're shooting, say, a singer-songwriter, you might be able to go down to like one, two, five um, on your shutter speed because that would 
they won't be moving as quickly and it still come out really lovely and sharp. Whereas if you're shooting a punk band, one two fiftieth of a second might not even be quick enough there. Shooting support bands is also a really good help for this because it gets your eye into how the lighting is for that specific show because even in the same venue, the lighting can vary so much between shows. And that also helps you increase your portfolio quicker. And that support band might go on to become something even bigger than the main band. So it's always good to have a bank of images of as many bands as possible. When it comes to focusing, I tend to use autofocus rather than manual focus. Some kind of continuous autofocus mode is best because your subject's moving around the image so much. You can also choose a specific focus point or if your camera has eye tracking, turn that on because that will be a massive help and help avoid that Murray situation I was talking about earlier. In terms of when you should use manual focus, just when you feel like it, if you feel like the autofocus isn't giving you the results you want, then just try it out on manual focus because sometimes people are moving too quickly for your camera to really pick up what's going on or it's so dark that while the photos might come out looking cool and dramatic, the camera isn't really in a position to pick them up. So if you're gonna do manual focusing, it can be really difficult, but give it a go, practice, and you'll get there. You should shoot RAW rather than JPEG when you're doing live music photography, as RAW photos are uncompressed, which means you have more detail, more colors, and more things to play with as opposed to a JPEG, which is a compressed file format. This is particularly useful when it comes to editing your photos, which is an essential part of live music photography. When you start shooting RAW, you will use up a lot more space. These files are huge, so you need to make sure you've got a fast SD card and a large SD card, and you might even need to start investing in external hard drives for your computer. Other less important things to consider when you're doing live music photography. Uh, do you want to be using single shot or continuous? I would generally go for continuous so your camera can keep taking photos and maybe capture a moment of emotion on someone's face. White balance. White balance is your camera working out what color things should be by setting one thing to be white. I used to always use auto white balance, uh, and that did me fine, but I realize now that that probably wasn't the best way to go about it because it means your photos come out looking quite inconsistent from a show. So I would choose something quite neutral, like a daylight or flash setting, which doesn't add any colors to or from the photo and allows the sort of show lights to stand out more and gives you more options when you come to edit. Metering mode, I don't think this particularly matters when you're shooting on manual mode because it's the camera working out what a nicely exposed photo would look like. And by the time you check that on your camera, the conditions would have changed in a live music setting. So don't worry too much about this one. Color profile, like white balance, choose something like neutral or faithful, or it might have different names on other camera brands, but that's on the Canon ones. Over the last couple of videos, we have run through what kind of cameras you might want to buy, why you might want to be shooting live music, and now you know the settings to, that you will use when you get there. So, better start thinking about what happens when you actually get to a show. That will be the subject of the next video, so please stick around for that. Please do subscribe to Pretend. We do these videos relatively regularly now, and please like and comment if you've got any questions, and we'll get back to you down there. We've also got other socials at Pretend Online in all the places you'd expect to find a thing like us. Uh, that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even TikTok. We're there for you. So thank you very much for watching. My name's James. You can find me at Jammy Randoms and I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. watching this video if you're enjoying this series on music photography then make sure you check out our patreon page because it would mean the world if you could support us there it's the main way we fund everything that we're doing here and so if you go and support us we can make more of these sort of things and there's also some really sort of special benefits for you such as specific workshops and stuff like that if you wanted to get involved thank you very much we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another video